Hey, so in the last video we we started uh, learning about the UVing texturing process and in this part, in part two, we're going to go more in depth with uh, the UVing part, um, some of the tools in there, and we're going to hand, we're going to tackle uh, a more complicated model and we'll get a bit more into um, some of the Photoshop and, and or and or GIMP, um, whichever one you want to use. Uh, in this, I'll, I'll be using Photoshop, but we'll get more into some of the tools in Photoshop. Um, so to start here, um, I've got an apple. So this is just an apple I just made. Um, if you did the previous tutorial, um, you should have an apple. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a good object to sort of start with. and. And hopefully you have this, and we'll we'll just use this from from here. Um, so if we're going through our UVing texturing process, uh, first part, uh, let's make a material. So I'm going to right click my object, right click and hold, and just assign a new material. Uh, we went over some of the um, possible materials before. Uh, Lambert's Fongs and Blinds being the main ones. And again, uh, uh, if you want shine, you probably want a Fong or a Blend, or if you're using a normal map. Uh, for this, we're just going to make a simple um, uh, hand painted sort of texture. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a photo in there. Uh, but it'll have more of a low poly hand painted feel. So we're going to just go with a Lambert right now. And also we want to put this a UV checker on, which can just be a Lambert. So I'm going to click my checkered box here. And then click File and Folder Icon. And then I'm just going to browse uh, to where I put my UV checkers. And we can't see it yet, but that's because uh, if we have four wireframe, five shaded, we just need to make sure to hit six to be able to see our texture, and we can see it there. And now we're at the spot where we want to auto map and create some UVs. And we want to try and get as far as we can uh, creating UVs, and then we'll get into sort of editing them. So. Remember, we've got our viewports here on the left, and I've. You can right-click one if you once you right-click, this will set it for good. So you don't have to always right-click this. So we've already got our set, so we'll just left-click it. We've got our perspective and UV texture editor here. Um, I'm gonna display my alpha channel so I can see through to my texture. Maybe we'll also hit that, and then. This is sort of uh, dimming the image. And then I'm also going to hit toggle shaded UV display so we can see some colors on our UVs. So now let's auto map this. We'll see what we get. And, okay, so this is what we got. Um, yours may look like this, it may not. Either way, we'll go through some of the tools. So whatever yours looks like, uh, you should be able to uh, UV it just fine. So we'll, we'll just go with this. This will, this will be fine for us. So we want to get into editing UVs now. And there's three main tools we want to use. We want to use uh, a cut tool, a move and sew tool, and a smooth UV tool. Um, depending on what version of Maya you have, this may be smooth UV, or this may be sort of the newer uh, version of that in 2016. Um, so these three tools, cut, move and sew, and smooth. Usually uh, I will try and sort of start by moving and sewing uh, like-minded pieces together. Also, uh, just to sort of revert back a little bit, um, we had talked before about seams versus stretching. And um, I'm going to pull up that document real quick. Oops. So 
So we talked a little bit last time about seams versus stretching, how it's a bit of a give and take, and we'll definitely see that within the apples, so just keep that in mind. And we'll have a seam anywhere that our UV shell stops and doesn't connect to another part of the UV shell. So that's going to be a seam, um, and we have to sort of manage seams versus stretching. The more seams we get rid of, the, the higher possibility we'll have for some stretching. So to start out, I'm just going to go to edge mode here. And I, like I said, I'm going to move and sew some of these. So I can just select these things in edge mode. And then I'm going to move and sew. Polygon, move and sew UV edges. So a lot of things happen there. Um, one of the things that happened that we, we don't want is we connected some pieces that we don't want. So we're going to Z back on that. Um, you can see sort of here, if I hover over this edge, which is also this edge, we just select that edge. You can see the seam there. That edge pertains, because these are connected, as we see here, they're connected on the model. So that edge is also going to connect those UV shells. So whenever I move and sew, this is the shortcut for moving and sewing. Whenever I move and sew, they're going to come together. Um, whatever has more faces or more weight, w uh, that object will pull other objects toward it. So that's why this one's moving over to here. This will become more obvious um, as certain objects have clearly more than, than others. Um, we might not want that because this is a, we want to kind of get a nice little horizontal slice for this, so we're just going to sort of not, we're going to try and avoid this until we handle some of these, these four parts. So as I see that that's highlighting that, I can just uncheck that, either by control marquee selecting, which will notice how it removed it up here. Or I could just like hit shift and left click it. And notice how that gets rid of that here. Um, these inner ones don't really matter because they're already sewn together. So if we just sew again, it's not really going to make a difference. So let's do that for this, this side. Notice uh, we've got some stuff highlighted here that we're probably not going to want. So I'm going to control and marquee select and just deselect that. And then I'm going to hit move and sew, and we'll sew that together. Once I sew that together, that's no longer going to be a seam. So you, we can see a great example of that here. We've got a seam up here. We've got a seam down here. Here we have no seam. Straight across, which is what we want. So let's do one more here. We will have to have at least one seam somewhere on this apple. Um, that'll just be, you know, something we have to deal with. Okay, so we've got this piece going across. So that's the first part. That's the moving and sewing part of this. Um, after you move and sew, you may want to smooth. Um, you're definitely going to want to smooth after you move and sew when you're closer towards the end. When you're this early, you might not have to, uh, but we'll do it now just to sort of familiarize ourselves. I'm in 2016, so I'm going to use this uh, Unfold UV tool, which is new in Maya 2016. Um, if you're in a previous version, you probably want to go Tool, Smooth UV Tool. So first things first, let's go with the 2016 one. Um, I can use B to, to increase the size of this brush. And all I have to do is just left click and run it across my verts and edges and faces. And as I do that, it's going to unfold it a little bit. And we actually could see that take shape. So if I undo and redo, it's unfolding a little bit. Our shape right now isn't bad, so um, we're not, whoops, not seeing any drastic change, but that's what it's doing. 
Uh, keep in mind, when you have this tool up, it's a tool. So when you're done using it, probably should hit Q to, to take it away. Otherwise, you may end up having trouble selecting stuff. So after we're done with the tool, we want to put it away, just hit Q so we can select stuff. Um, now I'm going to go to UV. I'm going to select a shell, or select one UV, and control right click to go to the full shell. There's my full shell. And now I'll just demonstrate uh, the old smooth UV tool. So I'm going to, oops. The way this one works, should be able to like click this little arrow guy. But uh, the way this one works, you usually just uh, left click, unfold, and you just drag it to the right. Sometimes you can keep doing it, you'll get a little extra out of it. Uh, we're not here. But we're just clicking it, dragging it to the right, and that's going to unfold our object a little bit more. Again, it's a tool, so when we're done, we just hit Q, and we remove it. So, we've got some pieces to fill out here. Now, this, I can, if I highlight these, I can sort of see exactly where these pieces are going to go. So one of the things that we can do is we can just cut them and separate them. So I'll just select these edges, and I'm just going to cut them. This little uh, knife sort of scissor here. Cut. I'm going to go to UV. I'm going to select one UV. Control right click and go to shell. And now I can just hit W and I can just move it because now it's separated. If I Z back and I try and go to shell, notice it grabs the whole shell. If I just try and select a couple and drag them away, it's going to pull the whole thing. And we know that that's going to cause stretching. So that's why I have to cut it. So we'll cut it, go to UV, select one UV, control right click to go to shell, W to move, and we'll just move it, and let's see. So now I can just select these edges, and now I'll just move and sew them into place. This shape's a little weird, that's okay. We can get rid of that with unfolding. but. I want to uh, add a couple more bits before we before we do that. So I can see right now I want to attach this part. I can see it looks like it's going to correspond to this. So I'm just going to select those edges, cut it, come back here, and move and sew it and attach it to there. Let's do it for up here as well. So I'm going to cut this, cut this here. Now I'll select those edges move and sew, and I'm going to do the same over here, and I can hit G to just redo my previous action. Now we can unfold this, and we can see that that's getting a, a lot nicer of a shape. A whole lot nicer of a shape. Now, I should point out here, we're starting to get a little stretching. These numbers and letters It's not too bad, but they're slightly smaller and slightly more stretched than what we're going to get sort of on the outside over here, like this zero. So this is where the, the game comes into play. Because I want to add more... I want to add this top part, because I'm going to have a big seam right there if I don't. But... If I add it, I'm only going to increase my stretching part. So in this particular instance, I'm going to sacrifice uh, stretching to remove seams. You may not want to do that. You might say, hey, I know how to get rid of these seams. I'm going to keep them. Um, I don't want stretching. This is where you, know, you as the, the designer, the artist, come into play. Um, and your experience will help guide you over time as to like when you should stretch it a little more um, or and 
when you should like remove seams. Um, now, for for an apple, I know that it can get way out of hand and stretch a lot, so maybe we will sacrifice a little bit, and maybe we will put a seam on the inside here. So maybe we'll put a seam there. So what I'll do is I'm going to cut that. Go to UV, select one, control right click to go to shell, and I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'm going to end up keeping this the way that is. But this, I want to lay out along here. But it's a little tough because it's in a circle, and this is laid out horizontally. Um, we could, just like we did in the last video, re-auto map this if we wanted to. But we're not exactly sure how that's going to come out. So what I'm going to do here is a little bit easier. Is I'm just going to select all of these edges. And I'm just going to cut them all. And then I'm going to come right back here. To my top part. Top edges here. And just move and sew all of them. And then we can just come in here. Select all these. And just move and sew those. And we'll do that again. So really sort of quickly and easily we can we can handle you know the weird shape that it threw at us just by cutting and moving and sewing. And we're trying to get this into a place where we can we can texture it. We're gonna we're gonna UV snapshot this and throw it into Photoshop. Uh, let's see, let's check out the bottom. Let's see where we want to put maybe the seam on the bottom. So for here, maybe we'll we'll put the seam here. I'm going to cut that, and we'll just separate these pieces. So now I'm going to cut all these, so they're not in the shape I want. And I'm going to move and sew them along the bottom here. And I can just hit, uh, once I'm moving and sewing, I can just hit G to redo. Cool. Well, let's unfold that. probably going to get some pretty good stretching here, a little bit. Yeah, we can see a little bit of that sort of occurring. Certainly some bigger numbers here, even here, um, than, than say like on the bottom. Um, for the top part, we'll just connect this little part. It is sort of good and and kind of important. You want to try and keep them relatively the same size. So you know, we can see that that the this particular edge doesn't quite match up with that edge. So I can just scale it to get it pretty close. Maybe we'll bring it a little smaller. And then we'll sew that. We'll do the same for the bottom here. I'm just going to right click and go to edge mode, see where that edge is over here. Rotate a little, scale it up some. Should be pretty good. Go to edge mode, shift select both, and move and sew. And then because we're at the end, do a little more unfolding. Fold that out. It's probably a little too small. It's a little smaller than what we would really need. It's more, it's more resolution than what we need. Actually, bring it back down. And let's smooth that back out a little more. 
wants to get a little bigger. Definitely some stretching occurring here, but we're gonna we're gonna have to shrink this too. So this is fine for now. Not perfect, but it's it's fine for now. So let's handle the uh, the stem now. Oops. So I'm gonna take this piece. I'm just gonna rotate it, and we're gonna start with moving and sewing. So I'm going to select some edges here, hit the move and sew button. We've got some overlap. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I thought it's going to come out uh, when we unfold this. Cool. And that's, that's fine. That's perfect. There will be a natural seam there as well. So that's why we, we definitely want to sort of keep that separate. That'll be a natural seam. Um, so that's a, a good place for us to put a seam. So now I want to get these two pieces inside of my zero to one space. A good tool for that is the layout tool. So let's check out the options. Um, We can sort of pre-scale it, we can scale it, we could uh, shell stack. Uh, we could rotate it um, 90 degrees. Sometimes this will give you more um, space to, uh, mo more space in your zero to one, so you get higher resolution. But for, for our purposes, uh, you know, this is a pretty simple low poly object and I wanna keep it the way it is for texturing because it'll make it easier. Um, so we'll just say sort of none there. We'll hit plot. Oop, that's not good. Um, it's also usually, I, I tend to give stuff a, a good amount of space. Usually it does a little better. Um, but that's okay. At least you get the idea, hopefully, of what it can do. If you have a lot of pieces, it can be pretty helpful. But I'm going to scale this up because we have more space to use. I'm going to scale it up a little. Actually, before I do that, uh, we'll scale both of these up. Usually, it gets you pretty close, so it does the scaling part for you, which is nice. And then we'll just take that and we'll put that there. So that's pretty much it. I mean, we could try and squeeze it a little extra out. Um, I like to leave a little bit. It's helpful if if you're trying to do some sort of effect that leaves put something on the edge. You know, it's nice to have a little space and to have a couple pixels to deal with. Um, so we'll leave a little space there. And now I'm gonna select my object in object mode. Go to polygons, UV snapshot, and we are going to uh, save a snapshot out of this and we're basically going to use that to trace and put our texture. So for now, uh, maybe I'll just put this on the desktop. I'll call this T underscore Apple underscore UVs. I'll keep it at 2048 by 2048. Um, it's a power of two, which is what we want. If we go back to our image requirements, one of them is going to be we want it to be a power of two. 
And I may end up reducing this to 1024 by 1024 or 512 by 512, but it's usually uh, it's a good idea to make something larger because it's a lot easier to downscale something than it is to upscale something. So if I just take it at 2048 by 2048, which is as high as I should need for this, I can always downscale it for whatever I need. Um, and then the second part of this is I'm going to want it as a PNG. So we'll click OK. And now it's time to go to Photoshop. So we'll go to Photoshop there. And let's open up those UVs. Um, so I, I quickly opened up this image. And these are my shells. They're, they're difficult to see now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put uh, I want to put a fill layer underneath this and layers are really uh, the power of Photoshop comes in its layers and this is my my layers sort of tab window over here on the right and this is sort of the universal symbol for a new layer so I'm just gonna click this make a new layer I'm gonna drag it underneath my previous one I'm going to come over here to my toolbox, grab the bucket, and maybe we'll grab a little color over here, and we'll just click it in, and we can see see the wireframe a little better now, but I want to make it even nicer. So I'm going to click my layer 0, uh, which is my UV layer. Just double click to name it. And I'm going to change the blend mode on this, which is this guy up here. It's the blend mode. Uh, what the blend modes do generally is they, they sort of change how your layer is being displayed. And we can change it to display so that it will show layers underneath. Um, so we can basically like s stack colors and layers and effects and all that kind of stuff. So right now I'm going to hit normal and uh, we're going to set that to screen. So we can see that it makes it a whole lot easier to see. Um, so now let's let's start making some layers. Let's uh, let's start texturing and we'll just get into this and we'll, we'll talk about um, how to sort of texture some of this stuff. Uh, so I got a base layer here for red. Um, I'm gonna uh, hit B for my brush tool. I'm gonna go to my brush tool now, and let's maybe grab a little brown. And I'm gonna uh, let's uh, I can hit the uh, right parenthesis to sort of scale up my brush. I use hotkeys in Photoshop, just like I do in, in Maya. It's helpful. So we'll put a little brown there for that. And I think for now, maybe this is, well, we could, we could add some more, but maybe this is good just to test out early on. I, and it's good to sort of keep things on separate layers. Um, because if I ever wanted to come in and say, like, even change the hue of this brown, uh, if I need it, like, darker or something, I can easily do that because it's on a separate layer. And it's not attached to my other colors. So I'm going to save this now. And we'll save the Photoshop file. But I'm going to call the Photoshop file T underscore Apple uh, underscore diff diffuse, or D. And we'll hit save. And now I'm going to save out a PNG version of that. So PNG, T underscore, Apple underscore, D. We'll save that. I don't need compression. And we'll minimize that. Bring up Maya. And now inside of Maya, I want to make a new material. I've used my checker material. And now I want to uh, put a new material. Oops. It's material. So this is our checker material. So I'm going to right click and hold this. 
sign existing. Uh, actually, I don't want to sign existing. I'm going to put a new material. Uh, we'll do a Lambert. We'll call this M underscore Apple. Uh, notice the UVs. Nothing changed with our UVs. We're using a new material, but our UVs haven't changed. Um, if we re-UV'd this, they would change. But they're going to stay the same. They're going to stay the same now. So I'm going to click this uh, checker icon, go to file, go to folder, and we will hook up our texture. And I sort of mentioned... Oops. I mentioned uh, in the last video sort of getting from A to B as fast as possible. So you can see how things work, and then you can go back and, and iterate and improve. And I didn't do this on purpose, but this is sort of a good example. I left the, the UV wireframe showing. So we can see the UV wireframe on our, on our texture. So let's go back and let's hide, hide that. We'll just hit this eye icon and hide that. And we'll save. We'll do a save as and we'll resave out our texture. You can come back in here. I'm going to hit the arrow icon for color. I'm just going to reload texture. And now we don't see uh, we don't see that UV anymore. So this is a good process to do because you can you can see uh, sometimes you know if you're just starting out you may spend a lot of time in Photoshop trying to get your texture to look right do yourself a favor and just throw it on the model early on just to, to see what it looks like and then you can always just resave it out and and test it and see how it looks because ultimately this is what matters what it looks like in in the program or in the engine is what's going to matter so you want to try and get to that point where you're seeing what the the end result or just about the end result is going to be um, you want to get to that point as fast as possible. Uh, so just throw it in there and, and take a look at it. Um, here's another just little tidbit. Maya will put default lighting on things. So that we're sort of getting some of that now, this darkness on the side. Um, we could throw some lights in here, you know, create lights. We could throw a point light maybe and see how that affects and, and helps our model. Um, but what I'm going to do instead, what, what might help you in terms of texturing, if you just say use flat lighting. Flat lighting is basically, it's almost like no lighting, but there is some light. It's just flat so we can see our texture at work. And this is like the true look and feel of our texture. So sometimes when you're texturing, it's good to put it on flat lighting so you, you get an honest look at what you're seeing and you can try and push it. Um, and if you want some fake lighting in, in your object, that's fine. We can, we can put some of that in our texture. It's actually probably going to be a good thing, um, regardless of what the lighting scenario you know, in our final product is going to be. It might be good to have a little bit um, of some fake fake lighting in here. So one of the things I can do is maybe I'll just grab uh, a slightly darker red. Maybe I'll just paint that in a little bit. The way we're doing this, we're almost definitely going to get a seam sort of on this edge. Uh, but that's something we'll sort of have to deal with uh, for now. One of the good ways to get rid of that is to poly paint. Um, uh, and you can use Modbox, is really great for, I find, for poly painting. Um, we could see, we could set this maybe to a multiply and get it even darker. We play with the opacity. Um, I'm going to hit E to erase and maybe just take a little bit away from this. So multiply is good as a shadow shadow layer. 
I'm going to make another new layer here. And actually, it's probably good to name some of your layers because you can generate a lot of layers Whoops, pretty quickly. So I, I like to put some sort of naming convention on these. Uh, so uh, multiply, good for shadow layers. Overlay, good for highlight layers. Maybe we'll grab a lighter red here. We'll set this to overlay. Um, sort of, you can see it like really brightening this image. This is actually way too much. Um, so I'm going to lighten this. And usually a good thing uh, for texturing is uh, if it's to, you want to keep it kind of subtle, you know, to some degree. And a good way to check that is if you turn it on and turn it off, and that's where you can really see the difference. So we can almost not see that unless we turn it on and turn it off. Um, if you make something, and uh, another sort of tip is if you make something and it sucks, just lower the opacity on it. Um, you know, you, you can have a ton of layers, and you can just build up interest over time. And, and so it doesn't have to be awesome on the first layer and uh, you know if it just sucks you know we can just lower the opacity so it's our stem it's our base um, another good thing to sort of work into our texture is a bit of a sense of variation so maybe let's try and work in a little green. Um, and I'm going to go with a soft brush, and and I'm going to keep it kind of light. So I'm lowering my opacity up here. Even that's pretty heavy right now. Maybe I'll just work this on the, the left side. I'm just going to erase some um, on the edge here. Uh, we could we could blend mode this, you know. We could go through some of our blend modes. That's not bad. I kind of like that. Uh, we could also just you know set it to normal, and we could lower the opacity. Uh, for now, then maybe we'll go back to color dodge. And go with some of that. So we've got a little green in there. Pretty subtle. Pretty subtle. Um, how about maybe a little uh, orange? And also over here on my other screen, I've got some reference up. You know, it's always good to, to have some reference. Um, so you can see what things actually look like. Oops. Maybe we'll get a little orange in here. Maybe we'll set that to color dodge. And let's do another one. Let's do yellow. Looks like we're already on. A bit of yellow. And maybe we'll try and push this area a little bit. Maybe this area is still a little ripe. could also group these. So I'm just going to shift and click to the bottom, control G to group. These could be my uh, variations. And if we wanted to, we could, you know, could lower the opacity on those as well. Sort of tweak them until we get them about where we want. Um, 
let's throw in a little bit of detail. So maybe we'll grab a brush over here. And a lot of times I just kind of try these out. Just sort of see. I want to try and get probably kind of hard to see what it's doing. But, you know, maybe I just want to try and get a little bit of finer detail. Um, I like to usually grab uh, let's see good spray brush and maybe we'll that yellow a little bit. Maybe we'll just I think actually what I'll do, you know, we could come up here to filter, blur that. Oops, actually I don't want to gush and blur it. Gush and blur. Uh, let's do maybe a little motion blur. And we'll get, just by spraying some dots and, and you know, giving it a little bit of distance, we can maybe sort of replicate some of that effect. Um, Sometimes some of those streaks are in an apple. So maybe we'll get a little streakiness out of it. And then we can always turn our, our dots back on as well. And maybe, maybe I'll just lower them a tid, tidbit. So let's save that. And let's see what that looks like. hit this arrow, we'll reload it, and there we go. So we, we've, we're getting seams, which we knew we were going to get. Probably a little too much orange, and I could probably use some variation within there. But other than that, like from here, I think it's starting to, starting to come around a little bit. Um, whoops. So let's do let's do this. Let's go back to our old buddy CG textures. And let's go to food, we'll go to fruit. got a bunch of apples here that we could we could use. Um, I'm gonna grab this one and this one. And I'm gonna open those in Photoshop. I can just, when I'm on my move tool in Photoshop, I can just click this, drag it, and now it'll just be its own layer. Um, let's organize this a little bit. So let's call this paint. I'm going to call 
this AO or ambient occlusion. Um, pull our stem down. And then we'll put the stem at the base. And then we'll start putting knees in photos. So we've got a bunch of white space here. Good tool for that is Magic Wand. Just click it, hit delete, and we'll delete a lot of that. Um, we can also, uh, you know, we could just go in. And we could erase these edges to make it work in. But maybe let's use this as an opportunity to sort of uh, show what masking can do. So masking is a way, if I delete this, you know, that it's just gone. But what if I want it? What if I need it? So masking is a way of hiding uh, without losing the detail. So I can sort of just paint away this detail. But if I wanted to, I could switch my colors and I could just paint it back. That's the nice thing about it. And I can always turn off the mask if I want. So we'll use that and we'll just uh, hide some of this. And I'm going to uh, remove the stem from this part of the image. Just control it. Oops. It's on the mask. Control X, control. Oops. stem. Uh, control T to transform. Really nice. And maybe we can use that there. come close to getting us started with the stem, uh, but obviously we're coming short there, so maybe if we use the clone brush, uh, alt, we'll sort of, oops, will give us a source point, and then we can just paint the other part of this. Again, we'll have a seam, but uh, the best way to get rid of that is just in uh, a poly painting program. So for for another tutorial, we'll, we'll go over that part. So then now we've got a maybe a little bit more realistic stem. We can maybe like lower it if we want to keep some of that brown in. Um, and then maybe for some of our shadow because we didn't have a lot of. Uh, shadow towards the bottom of that. Let's add a little darkness maybe coming up from here. Always good to get some gradients going in whatever you're doing. They, I find that they always sort of tend to look nice to get a gradient going. And Actually, when we grab a green, maybe we'll go a little lighter towards the top. Cool. Alright, back 
into our main apple. Hide some more of this. Let's see what our Valen modes look like, just to get, see if they're any good. It's not too bad. So the darker color seems to hide the edges a bit. Maybe we'll just go with normal. Maybe we'll uh, lower the opacity a little bit. Let some of the, the other parts of the apple kind of come through. Uh, we could duplicate this. So we'll pull it over here. Maybe we'll flip it so it's not so even or anything like that. Getting a little more realism there. Maybe we'll try one more. Maybe we'll scale it up. Uh, anything outside of this, this, these lines, we won't see. But. Uh, That's fine. So it, we can sort of, as long as it's not cutting into other UV spots, it's not it's not an issue. Um, let's maybe lower that to a bit. And let's put let's grab some of this brown green, and let's put some of that here around the stem. sure I want to up that. Oops. Not sure I want to up that layer, so. I also, I tend to find, like, so I'm, I'm playing with my opacity a lot here. I tend to find it's a little easier to build up to start with something low. Uh, an opacity and kind of build it up over time. So let's let's check this out and see how this is, this is coming along. Oops. Definitely still got some seam issues here. Um, and this this is a little too splotchy, but we're starting to get there. Um, usually after a photo, you know, you don't you don't want to just slap photos on stuff. So, but now we've got like a pretty good, we've got a really nice sort of base going right now. So what I could do, uh, or what I would sort of like recommend for most people, I will, I'll try not to go in like all the gory detail, 
But we could come in here um, and maybe even looking at a little bit of, of reference and we could try and start playing up some of the, these uh, tidbits of information. And actually, we didn't even put in our, our second image yet. Overlay. White is usually good with overlay. Maybe we'll just play some play some things up. Maybe we'll play up some of these spots a little bit. Maybe we could play up some of the variation. It's probably really hard to see what's happening, but I'm just very lightly. 10% opacity. I mean, we're just bringing out some of the, the natural variation that already exists from our image. You know, but we can sort of paint paint it in now as, as we see fit, as we want it. Maybe this piece has a little bit of a, maybe there's a little extra divoting. Maybe we even like, dig in and cut it out, sort of. We can try to put a highlight on it here. Lots of lots of different things that we can we can do. Add some dark around some of these spots. You know, maybe we want to play up that part of it. Maybe we want to show this going in so we darken the top a little bit here. Lots of cool stuff we could do. This is kind of where you usually, once you get past the technical um, hurdles, this is where you can really sort of start having some more fun and really start getting into some of the detail. some of those things out a little bit. Whatever, you, however you want to do it. You know, we could put maybe some more, uh, this other image we have has some, uh, some more like decay coming in off the top. You know, we could try and get some of that in. We could maybe get some more green coming in. Maybe we could push, uh, push the green a little bit if we wanted to. Let's eyedropper and maybe grab some of this green. Sometimes, sometimes this can get a little tricky. Like right now, I kind of want. Oops. There's a new layer of green. Be above our photos, so we can see it a little better. 
Now I'm actually erasing it because I went a little heavy on it. And let's maybe actually get a little bit. This is what I would. This kind of sucks. This, this brushing. It's a little, maybe a little too obvious. We're getting away from sort of what we wanted, but. So yeah, so before I go too far, um, let's save this. We'll check it out. I, I could I could keep going on this for for a while, um, and I might. Um, but that should be pretty good, especially for a starter sort of apple. That's pretty good. Um, and maybe in the next one, uh, I'll come in and I'll talk about. Uh, poly painting and we can use this as an example of, of how to get rid of some of these seams that we have here in poly painting and sort of maybe trying to take this take this apple that we have to sort of the try and one up it get it a little further get it looking a little better whoops there's some of our uh, default lighting Oh god. Um, maybe we'll enable a little screen space ambient occlusion, maybe a little anti-aliasing. Oh! Jeez, okay. Well, I pushed it a little too far. Um, okay, I'm going to end it there, but uh, hopefully you sort of get the idea. And uh, if you have any questions, um, robertnally.com, uh, just email me and let me know. Uh, see you next time.